friends here who will interpret. Still so your friends? Just, sorry? Still your friends? Still our friends. <laughs> Everybody in the room who can speak a tiny bit of English, put your hands up. Tiny bit. Medium bit. Experts. Oh, oh sorry. Yeah. <laughs> okay, good, good, good. Um, yeah, so um, I'm Mike Vanderley. Um I tend to do 3D designs for 3D printed droids. Um, but what the session today is about is one of my favourite bits is weathering. So once you've built the perfect, shiny, uh, meticulously creation, then what you're going to do is smash it, bash it, and make it look old. The background to that, I think, is that when Star Wars came out, it was one of the first science fiction films where uh, the models were dirty and they looked grubby and they looked grimy. Prior to that, we had lots of shiny silver suits um, and, and everything was immaculate. So. For us, I think building replicas of what we see in the movies, weather is a really important part of that, and actually, particularly with R2, you tend to see it more dirty than you do clean in, in movies. That's my se envejezca y pueda parecer, digamos, utilizada. Él explica que antes de que saliera Star Wars, todas las películas que eran de ciencia ficción, las piezas estaban inmaculadas y perfectas y brillantes, y sin embargo a partir de Star Wars las piezas empiezan a aparecer ya como utilizadas, envejecidas, golpeadas, etc. y que eso marcó un antes y un después, y es lo que va a explicar el ahora. The, the, other, the other great thing about weathering is it, it covers all of your mistakes. Um, ah, no. So don't use that for that. Eh? <laughs> if you if you made lots of mistakes, I would go for this look. <laughs> this, this this is probably uh, very 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 heavily. <laughs> exactly. It's more more mud than uh, than robots. So um, I'll cover I'll cover through I'll go through some of the techniques. I've got to say. There's probably people in the club that are experts at this. Um, this is an art form to actually get something that looks natural. It's very easy to make something look dirty. It's much more difficult to make it look like it's gone rusty over time. So it is an absolute art form and I've seen some fantastic people that do amazing jobs. I've also kind of know that there's some shortcuts that can make well, certainly makes me look better than what I am with with, with weathering. Now in the, in the UK we're, we're quite fortunate, you can see this small video here, um, there's a, a product called Dirty Down which is a, um, a weathering spray um, and it's the one that's used in Pinewood and it's used in a lot of the movies that you see and it's incredibly easy to use, <laughs> you, literally just, you literally just spray it on, rub it off with a damp cloth and it, you, you almost get a, a perfect weathering look. So. That's, um, and I'm not sure how accessible that is. Uh, uh, it's called Dirty Down. So. In Inglaterra, they use a spray that, in fact, they use in the studios Pinewood to enhance the materials, but I didn't hear about it. Dirty Down. Dirty Down. It's a spray that looks like it looks like it. Enhanced in a natural way. It's the most easy. Yeah, so... There's, there's lots of other techniques, there's everything from coffee and acrylics and things like that, which is it's got quite, quite common. Um, the, the, the first, I think, the most important part about weathering is making sure that the surface that you're weathering onto is prepared correctly. Um, the problem, what, what weathering will do is it will it will attach to imperfections, 
and in some cases that will add to what we're looking for, but in a lot of cases it will highlight where you've got rough paint jobs and things like that. So um, this is me preparing a 3D printed um, part, but actually what we want to do is make sure that the, the finish is very, very smooth, um, that it's been painted, and most importantly, put one or two clear coats over the top of it. So if you do <coughs> go too heavy with the weathering, you can rub it back without having to take the paint off. So clear coats are very important. Tienes que tener una, una preparación de la pintura, la pieza tiene que estar bien montada, bien rematada, bien pintada y con una capa de pierco, con una capa de barniz encima para proteger la pintura, porque de hecho el, el, las técnicas de envejecido muchas veces eh, atacan la pintura que hay que Entonces tienes que tener una capa de... yo utilizo capa de barniz acrílico, el, bueno, clear coat que se da también con, con spray para proteger la pieza antes de empezar. Si la pieza no está perfectamente digamos, smooth, lisa, que resalta la Now, I mentioned this um, last one actually, but there's a, there's a great product which is just there, which I've not found anything that, uh, that is better than that for, for doing 3D printed um, uh, models, and it's called Motip uh, Spray Putty. Um, and one of the well-known things with 3D printed models is you have to fill it and sand it and fill it and sand it and fill it and sand it. Motip, it's, it's four coats of four coats of Motip or five coats before you do anything and then literally the sanding is a lot quicker. So we certainly like to use that because it speeds up the model making process. There's some other paints at the bottom of there. Um, the Rust-Oleum Satin white is is the um, standard white for R2. Um, it's the one that again they've used in all of the certainly all of the R2 since the Force Awakens, um, and it's it's guess it's what all of the professional builders use, readily available. Um, the blue is a choice, I guess. That's a UK one. Uh, it's a Citroen colour, but I know that there's, there's a lot of controversy. The ones on the movies is is is, is a mixed colour, so it's getting quite close to, to what, what that is. But the the ideal match is fairly readily available to get the base colours correct. <laughs> Es putty en spray, un spray putty que lo que hace es rellenar las marcas de impresión para quitar las líneas y que con tres o cuatro manos de eso deja ya la pieza preparada, que lo utiliza mucho en, en, en Inglaterra, que se usa mucho, yo creo que aquí no está disponible, por eBay. Luego el, el color siguiente, que es el de la marca Rustolium, que es el blanco satinado, que es el color estándar blanco para el R2, que es el que de hecho se ha utilizado en la, en la nueva saga de películas. Y sobre el azul, que hay mucha controversia, sobre él no hay un estándar definido sobre el azul que usa el eh, Cada uno utiliza un azul diferente y todos están bien. Todos son correctos. Todos son correctos. Y creo que hay otra cosa que tengo ahí, que es... Sé que lo mencionas en muchos de los pintores, pero siempre para probar algo en una superficie que no puedes ver. Ciertamente... Um, certainly... Acrylics and enamels, which are the two most common paints, we've got to be really careful we don't mix those. Uh, it will ruin your paintwork and you need to sand it all the way back again. So I think just testing the mix of the colours, not just the actual colours that you're using, but then the clear coat over the top of it, certainly test it before you before you apply it and onto something that you've spent, you know, a good few weeks sanding and preparing and finishing. Absolutamente. 
ante todo. Se te arruina la pintura. Entonces, mejor probarlo sobre una superficie, digamos, sobre la que no hayáis trabajado durante semanas, porque se puede arruinar el. Yo supongo que lo explicará ahora, pero bueno, que, no sé si alguno hace modelismo y pinta maqueta en eso. Eh, las pinturas base que se utilizan, supongo que el rutolio en blanco es acrílico y eh, los materiales que usas luego para envejecer suelen ser, en, suelen ser pinturas con base de disolvente. Por eso ha comentado antes que antes de ponerse a, a envejecer la pieza hay que darle una capa, un clear coat o un barniz para preservar la pintura, porque si no lo que te va a pasar es que se va a levantar. Cool. So, uh, that really just gives you the, the very solid basis then to do for me, which is the next bit really then, is adding the details on top of the base coat. So certainly, um, R2 is a, I would personally say, fairly simple um, coil to paint because he's, you know, he's got very distinct panels and each panel is a different colour. As you start to see some of the amazing creations that we've got now, um, on some of the custom droids, it gets a little bit more technical. Um, and I just thought I'd share some of the tools and some of the techniques that people use, and there's, there's lots of other ones as well. Uh, but, but in, I guess in my shed, I've got a whole bunch of these kind of things, uh, from, from masking tape. Um, I don't know if you've got front tape over here, but uh, it's, a, it's a product I, I swear by it because it stops, it stops the bleed lines. It's, it's, it's a lovely, lovely masking tape. A little bit more expensive, but, but certainly well worth it. Um, coaching tape and, and trim lines, rather than trying to paint it, is applying, applying those. Um, a couple of things that are now my firm favourites. One of them is the liquid latex for masking areas which are quite complex. So just painting the latex on and then just spraying it. It's a lot more controllable than masking tape. And water slide decals, and again, if you've not come across these, you can buy them from the likes of Amazon uh, or, or any sort of the online retailers. And they're laser printed and you can create, you can, you can print anything you want and then just slide it off as you would do a model. Making sure again that you do seal them before you do with, uh, with a clear coat. <coughs> Aquí está hablando de las herramientas que se utilizan a la hora de hacer de MSC pues para separar la, las zonas, para encintar, etc. Y comentaba antes que el R2D2 es uno de los droides más fáciles a la hora de, de hacer el envejecido, porque no es lo más complicado de, de encintar. Y nos ha hablado ahí habla pues de, de a la izquierda es la masking tape, que es la cinta de carrocero, la de más carrera de toda la vida. El patching tape es cinta de. Yo creo que se utiliza en este. Es cinta de plástico, no es para envejecer ni para enmascarar ni nada. Esa cinta se usa para, pues para acabado. Pues para hacer una línea en vez de pintarla, pones eso. Luego el látex líquido se usa mucho también para enmascarar ciertas zonas que no quieres pintar en zonas complicadas. Se suele aplicar con un pincel, entonces te permite ser muy, muy técnico y, y ser muy preciso. Y luego dice también que sí, está muy de moda también la las calcamonías, las, esas, las ricas, que con las impresoras de tinta que hay hoy en día y los papeles especiales, que las puedes imprimir y colocar sobre el rollo para, pues, para, para poner letras o para, para hacer, para enmascarar y luego pintar el fin. So, and ultimately, that's then your base. So, you, you painted, you've added all of the details, you've got a perfectly shiny droid, you've applied your clear coat and it looks like it just rolled out of the factory and that's that for me is then where where the fun actually starts um, I've got some some pictures up there and I, I'm, I'm quite sad but if, if I'm walking around and I see a particularly dirty van or lorry or a rusty van and lorry I'll take photographs if I'm going down um, walking up and down staircases and they've got rusty banisters you take photographs because what you're trying to do with um, with weathering is to recreate this, which is which is real life, and that when actually it sounds like it's simple, in that you just bash it around a little bit and make it dirty. When you look at what what uh, what the elements can actually do to these things over time, it's actually it's created some quite interesting patterns. So the inspiration for me is to capture and to look at what you want to achieve before you start throwing dirt all over the place on top of your wonderful, the clean robot. <laughs>
Eso lo que está explicando es que cuando terminas de hacer la pieza, parece que ha salido directamente desde la fábrica, por así decirlo, está inmaculado y perfecto. Pero que él coge su inspiración pues, de ir caminando por la calle y ver un, un camión o lo que sea que está ya pues, erosionado y que tiene ya ese. ese el óxido. El óxido, exacto, ya está oxidado, ya está golpeado, etc. Eh, o con unas escaleras, lo que es la, la escalería de pasamanos, etc. Entonces todo eso él le hace fotografías porque no es fácil simplemente darle una capa de pintura y parece que está utilizado, sino que quiere que se parezca digamos, lo más real posible. Entonces coge su inspiración del de día a día y fotografías que hace por la calle para inspirarse. And I think with that is, is having a a vision as to what you actually want to achieve before you start doing the same with weathering. The other inspiration is to, is to really pour over and examine the movies. Um, there's, again, there's the many dirt of R2, there's um, the R5D4 there, we've got Wally. They're, they're, all, they're all great to look at, particularly if you're trying to recreate a, a very movie accuracy. Um, I've seen people actually paint on the, the shapes of the weathering so that when you look at them they are almost frame for frame identical to, to what's in the movie. But the important part is that you've got a, a, a view or a vision of what you want to achieve before you start start with the, the messy stuff. <laughs> el de la película y el suyo y es exacto, pero que lo, lo importante es que tú tengas claro lo que quieres hacer antes de hacerlo, que no empieces a envejecer la pieza sin tener una idea clara de dónde quieres llegar. Dónde quieres llegar. Entonces... The other, the other part to kind of just, just reflect, if, you, if you've already made scale models, so um, thing, things like, like this, which are, which are quite small, weathering is very different because you're not just weathering but you're exaggerating shadow um, and it's a, it's a different technique when you start to do something full scale. So with full scale you're actually doing it a lot more subtle because the, the model is large enough to create all of the shadows that you need. Whereas when you're starting to do things like air, aircraft you're trying to exaggerate shadows. It's just a little point to message on, on, scale, on scale models. Cool. Now there's some um, there's some five which I would say are very basic modeling techniques that you can then apply to larger larger scale um, larger scale modeling. Um, this is the first one, which is the oil oil paint wash. Now, this really is about letting letting the weathering do the work for you. So it's taking <coughs> it's taking the base colour, it's thinning it out. In this case, it's oils, but you can also do this with acrylics. And all you're really doing is blobbing it on around detail. And what happens is the the paint will naturally flow, as you can see here. It will actually start to flow around the detail and starts to enhance it. So, in the first instance, what you're doing is picking out the main main detail. Una de las técnicas que se utiliza, no, esto es de modelismo y también el tejido de alrededor de los robots, son los lavados de pintura. Entonces, como veis, se trata de coger pintura generalmente en el amel, porque corre mejor sobre la superficie. Se puede hacer también con acrílicos, pero lo normal es hacerlo con y la técnica consiste en coger eh, con un pincel pintura disuelta un poco en que no sea eh, tal cual viene de bote, un poco disuelta con un disolvente y aplicarla donde quieres, pues en, en tornillos o en recovecos y eh, la misma consistencia aceitosa de la pintura va a hacer que corra por el elemento. Tú aplicas un puntito y automáticamente se distribuye por todo el En este caso lo está aplicando en tornillos y veis que, se, que directamente cubre todo el elemento. El, pues, aplicas la la pintura y corre por toda la superficie que quieras. Entonces eso lo haces generalmente pues, en tornillos, en remaches, en, en esquinas, en huequillos, en sitios que no resaltan, sino que son de difícil acceso, donde generalmente se acumularían. Now, with, with most, with most weathering, 
you put in something on that you will then almost immediately wipe off. And I think that's probably, that's very different than what you would do with normal painting where you apply paint and you touch it, you don't want to touch it until it's dried. With weathering, with this, you'll find it might be a little bit heavy, but you can easily take a dry brush or a cloth or whatever and start to, start to, to wipe that off. Once, once you've created this, which is a shadow, then that's where we can start to then move on to creating chips and creating marks. And again, this is thinking, and like I said before about looking at what happens in real life, is taking a view of the, the model and seeing where the sharp edges are, where it's most likely to get bashed, where it's most likely to pick up, pick up dirt. And again, if you watch, if you look at many R2s that, where they've been weathered, uh, incredibly beautifully you'll see that it starts off light at the top and then the feet are filthy because that's where it will roll along the ground. So, so you're, trying to, you're trying to recreate what happens in real life. This is very much then about starting to put the edges on there where the paint started to chip off and to wipe. In the first instance you can see that they're putting lighter colour on and then they follow it up with a, with a dark brush that sort of starts to give a little bit more depth. Combined, yeah. Um, then, then you can see the difference, I guess, as you move from here, which is very clean. You started to put it up some detail. You started to get some chips in. What you've still got is a very even colour of paint throughout the whole model. So the next thing is to create an uneven look, as, as you would do with, with natural wear. Um, and most things that you see that have been around sometime, it's not an even paint. This one actually is quite a quite scary when you see you first doing this because you take your beautiful model and you put tiny dots of oil paint that are different colours. Um, as with all weathering, you're actually putting this, this paint in that's quite, it's quite, quite thin and then you can see with a dry brush that you're rubbing that paint in. So you can see very subtle shades changes between the different sort of panels and this is no different than you would do you do it with oils, but if you're doing things with acrylics or you're doing things with coffee, this is almost what you're doing. So putting lots on and then rubbing it back till it starts to blend in and seem natural. The important bit with this is to use more than one colour. And sometimes you wouldn't necessarily think of weathering with bright blue. Uh, you might do it with brown, but the more, the more variation in colour you get, the more natural you get with it. If it doesn't look right, you can always wipe it off again. So. That's the important part, really. Another of the techniques that you use, but what you're putting are some techniques that you use in modelism. They are modeling techniques, small scales applied to to one large scale. So there are techniques in modelism that are applied. In this case, we're talking about the the fundidos of paint to make sure that the color base that the piece has is not too monotonous or too uniform. Consists in applying different tonalities of paint. We have different colors of paint: black. Eh, creo que tiene marrón, tiene azul, o sea, lo importante es utilizar variación de pintura. Y luego con un pincel, eh, bueno, yo con lo suelo hacer, con un pincel húmedo en disolvente, ir barriendo de arriba abajo para crear diferentes tonalidades y cuando, cuando termines, pues eh, el, el color base de la pieza va a variar. Ya he comentado antes, lo bueno de esta técnica es que si no, te, si no estás contento con el resultado, eh, como son pinturas en amel, con un poco de disolvente lo puedes quitar fácilmente sin afectar a la pintura. Um, and then another technique, and again this this is favourite of mine, particularly around the feet, is, is, is <coughs> splatter. So yeah, splatter. So this is once once you you've done most of the base and the subtle colours, and you want to start to see. Um, you know that you've, you've got the, the feet that are driven through mud, etc. 
is we're taking a sharp bristle brush, we're taking some thin paints out and we're literally just splattering it on there so you can build up lighter colours and dark colours as you would do as if you were riding through through mud or other, other type of material. Are you breaking through the paint? Yes. If you get a, um, a standard paintbrush that you would use and you cut the bristles about that short, it flicks it. No, 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 no. What I had asked you is, uh, you, you break through the paint, not what you, no. you, you, you no. add. Ah, it's not it's not it's not ah, it's, it's, you apply yeah. more, more uh, layers over it. More layers, yeah. Yeah, the, um, what you, you, the hairspray chips, you apply a spray. So if, you want, if you've got something that you, want, that you want to show the metal through, you spray it silver. And then once you've sprayed it sil silver and it's dried, you then apply hairspray. Um, and in some cases salt and in some cases rock salt uh, and, and what that does is it creates um, it creates a layer that isn't actually really allows the paint to stick properly when you then put the paint over the top of it so hairspray, salt and then your paint layer over the top of that what, what's brilliant about that then is as you start to rub that back once it's dried with, a, with a, either a wet brush is it the paint will flake off and it will also create bubbling where the salt is which gives you that kind of real rusty look that we saw in the previous previous sort of vehicles so hairspray and salt is very very useful but very difficult to apply it, it is yes and you'll have hairspray anyway because you need it for 3d printing to make things <laughs> Esto se hace para resaltar eh, la capa inferior de pintura, por ejemplo, ahora si quieres pintar un casco y quieres que la capa base del casco sea un color aluminio y por encima tienes la pintura final, por ejemplo, un color verde, eh, la técnica que se utiliza es pintas el aluminio, lo dejas secar, le das una capa de, de laca de pelo de la normal que se compra en el supermercado y esa capa de pelo lo que va a hacer, esa capa de laca lo que hace es que la pintura que tú pongas por encima, a pesar de que se adhiera a la pieza, se va a poder levantar luego con un pincel humedecido con agua. Entonces tú aplicas la laca, la dejas secar, aplicas la pintura final por encima e inmediatamente después con un pincel húmedo en agua va retirando por fuera. Y queda un efecto muy bonito en el que asoma la capa de abajo. Pero es una técnica un poco complicada de utilizar. ¿eh? Para armas a lo mejor. Para armas. Yo la utilizo mucho en maquetas, en modelismo. Pero eso es... ¿eh? Utilizando sal, también después de, de echar la, la laca, le echas sal gorda, la dejas secar, pintas por encima y luego retiras esa sal y queda como puntitos que, que asoma la pintura por debajo. Así se imita muy bien el óxido, pero bueno, es una. Es difícil, ¿eh? Es muy difícil. Bueno, no es muy difícil, pero es difícil de controlar. Mira, que está Yeah, so hay muchos vídeos en YouTube, tú pones en YouTube, por, uh, si pones en YouTube técnica de la lata, te salen un montón de vídeos. Yeah, it's cut off a little bit, but that's the... <laughs> <laughs> we all have the, the same phone <laughs> phone. So yeah, this, is, this just shows the hairspray and salt in a little bit more detail, but you can, can get this type of technique as well using, using that, which, um, which, I, which I like. The, there's, there's, I mean, this is a side of Dio, um, which, when this came out in celebration, I poured, looked over these photographs, so you can, you can see the highlights, you can see there's some uh, diagonal lines there of, of, of dirt and some yellow patches here, and that's really what you're trying to do, is get the original and then start to try and recreate all of that. Que se ve la, la suciedad en las juntas, la, las zonas más claras alrededor y toda la suciedad y que lo que se intenta es imitar lo que, lo que
And there's, there's also, a, I mean, again, lots and lots and lots of techniques. So what I would say with weathering is, uh, YouTube is definitely your friend. Yeah. Having a watch you how other people do things. Dry, <laughs> dry brushing is another huge favourite of mine. There's some very, I guess, you know, very simple techniques with a bit of dry, dry brushing and a bit of dirty down and you can basically create something very, very, very quickly. Um, there's uh, rub and buff, which I think people would use for the dome, but a little tiny, tiny bit of rub and buff on a, uh, rub and buff on a cloth run along the edges of a, a satin black paint gives you kind of a very realistic metal metal really picture. Hmm? Yeah. Expensive. Rub and buff? Expensive. Yeah, Spain is very expensive. Is it really? No, the rub and buff is the pasta that you pull and... Yes, yes. That's nice. Well, you yeah, in, the, in the UK, rub and buff is about £3.350 for a tube. And the tube... Que lo que hace es, eh, da el efecto pulido, lo aplicas con un pincel o incluso con una pancilla, es para darle las aristas. Y en España, si quieres comprar uno, es 10 veces, ¿no? Es 15, 20, 25 euros. ¿Really? I should have brought some bigger. Yeah, you, you, you have to, es pequeño y lo, hay que comprarlo online. Pero es un sí, you have to buy it online, ¿eh? ¿eh? You can yeah. buy it here. So that's why it's very expensive. Wow. You have to buy it in the UK. I am. Um, I ordered one tube from Amazon once, and the tube lasts about three domes. It's, it's amazing. Um, and Amazon sent me the wrong quantity, so rather than one tube, they sent me one box, which had 30, 30 tubes for 350. Um, I, I will never use 30 tubes in my entire life with the amount that it actually covers. So. 24.50. Sorry, just hold on. <laughs> <laughs> 2450 Jesus. <laughs> okay. It's not our friend, eh? <laughs> and, and, and it's allowed in aeroplanes. So, yes. Um, next, next time I'll rub and buff for everybody. <laughs> rub and buff's on me, I'll swap it for a pint of beer. Anyway. It's a pasta that has various tones, but it's all metallic. It's for the effect of aluminum. De cobre y se lo puede dejar con el dedo. Lo que haces es eh, aplicar la, eh, un poquito de pasta y lo distribuye. Sí, metaliza la zona. Está muy bien para armas, para su tamaño, para dar ese efecto final de metalizado. Sí, es increíble. Es un surprise. Es un surprise. Esto es el stuff que mencioné antes, que es called Dirty Down. Um, and it's, uh, it's a water based dye which you spray from a, a distance as you can see there that's quite it goes on quite heavy um, but because it's water based it's water soluble you can literally breathe on the paint yeah. and you can clean it off with a with a cloth as you can see there um, and what it does is it it basically pulls back to you know a very 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 natural natural looking uh, looking dirt. And this stuff's about, in the UK, it's about £10 per spray. Very important, in UK. In the UK. They, they don't send to Spain. I've not seen it for sale in Europe, and this um, I've, in the UK I've got an account with the um, the guy that makes it, so we can distribute it to the Z. So ten pounds, yeah. So he's with the UK club. We can have it for eight pounds a spray, um, but it's so difficult to ship because of the restrictions on, on aerosols. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah.
Sí, sí, que sí, que sí. sí, sí, sí. 11 euros. Y, y está disponible aquí. Es available in Spain. Ok. Y la película tampoco. Y la película. Ah, no, so the extra no, side. It's good. Yeah, it's a good price. It's, it's, it's really good. Sort of I mean, uh, <laughs> we use dark brown, ash blonde, and black. Oh, different tones. Th three tones, really. Okay, yeah. Three tones disponible. Yeah. yeah. Um, so you apply dark brown as your main dirty agent. So quite heavy, but dark brown over. Um, a very, very, very light ash blonde. Just, a, just a few sprays. And quite light on the black, so it's, may, it's mainly the dark brown. The, the ash blonde gives a sandy look to it, and the black just gives a little bit more of the detail. And then once it's on, it will look sprayed, and then it's just rubbing it back. And you can do that either with breathing on it, you can do it with a damp cloth, or you can do it with some very very fine wire wool, and you can get an incredible incredible effects with with, uh, with dirty down. The, the other good thing with this is because it's water based, you can take it right back to clean. So if you get a damp cloth, you can clean it right the way back. You've got to be a little bit careful with ash blonde because it can die. So you, you can actually, if you get it wet on the paint, it can actually dye the, dye the paint. So you, you spray all of this from quite a distance and let it dry as it, as it goes through quite a lot. And I've got a... Um, this, this is from a YouTube video that I did it when I did mine, so I don't know. Yeah, this is mine, yeah. yeah. Um, a couple of other products. This extremely cheap rub and buff in the UK. <laughs> it's all the, all the different colours. Um, it, it is magical in how much coverage it gets onto your fingers as much as it does onto the droids, but it really can. You can do about three, three, three domes in this stuff. Yeah, with, with one tube. The tubes are only like so big. The, the other great product is this uh, Molito liquid chrome. And it, it's a pen. It is. It is a pen. But it's uh, uh, for creating simple chromed areas. It gives an incredible chrome effect. Very, very, very shiny. Um, and I know people who take it from this and put it into spray, into the little spray gun. So you can, you can spray it on. And as long as you're perfect, you, 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 your surface is perfect, you can virtually get a chrome, chrome effect on it. I think I think overall with with a lot of the uh, weathering techniques, it's 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 having having time to play with it, getting the materials, and just practicing on something that isn't um, something that's taking you three and a half years to put together and about eight thousand pounds worth of aluminium. So it's ideal is trying it with small or different different parts, and then you know gradually building your confidence up with actually doing that. Sí, que, que, and that's pretty much me, I think, on, on weathering, so... Um, I've got a question. You've got a question, go! <laughs> <laughs> how much weathering is good weathering? What, in how less, far you go? Less is, yes. less is better. Less is more. <coughs> more, is yeah. more. more is more? more is more? No, less is more. No, less, less is more, definitely more, I think. Um, that said, when you, when you see the, the movie 
dry it and you see how they, they always look dirtier than I imagine them to be. Um, but certainly, I think it's, it's easier to, set, to apply a little bit more over a period. But what I would say is, less is more, leave it, walk your way, and if you need to put more, you do more after three days or four days because you've got used to it. If you sit there and keep pouring over it, you'll end up going too, too far, if that makes sense. But you can always go backwards. You can always go backwards, you can. Yeah. You can, yeah, yeah. As long, as long as you've got that clear coat and you've got something that you to pull it back with. If it's just raw paint, it can easily stay in the raw paint, which makes it pulling back a lot, lot harder. And there is a there's a much longer way of weathering which involves taking it to lots of events and seeing lots of children with sticky fingers. <laughs> 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 That work, works equally as well. But that would work in one day. One day you would have it weathered. You would have it. You would have it absolutely weathered. In. And again, if you, you know, a lot of the ones that were in in the movies were, you know, they they weren't pristine because they were bashed around. And they, it always amuses me because we're we're trying to create dents that were made by um, a stagehand knocking something over and banging its head. So there's, you know, the natural weathering has got that so it does, does equally well sometimes. Cool, any more questions? Una pregunta? No. No, thank you.